We all have them and we all need a way to use them. So I'm hoping that today's video will help you alleviate a little bit of that backstash that you have from leftover yarn from projects of the past. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Midweek Ramble. My name is Taylor and I will be your host. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you 10 patterns that I have found on Ravelry that I think are a great place to go if you would like to use up that accumulating leftover, small bits of yarn, or even mini skein advent stash. If you're like a lot of people this Christmas, you have yourself an advent calendar of yarn. Now, I am not one to purchase advent calendars of yarn. I don't particularly love Love having a back stock of mini skeins. However, there are folks out there who do, and there are also folks out there who just like me have a basket or some kind of collection full of leftover bits of yarn that really need to have a use because we don't want to just let this yarn go to waste. It just sits back here and that's a lot of weight of yarn that really could be put to good use in some fun, creative, scrappy projects. Or, and like I'm going to mention here, you can have some fun marling two different yarns together to come up with some really fun colors ways for knitting really basic, mostly stockinette designs. Okay, I have a lot of patterns I wanna get through today, 10 to be exact, but before I dive in, I really wanna make something clear. These are not specifically advent calendar patterns. There are a couple in here that I think were intended to be knit using advent minis. A lot of them are designed with leftovers and scraps in mind. Some of them, like I said, they are specifically for advents, but for the most part, these are just really cool patterns patterns that provide you with an opportunity to use scraps without it detracting from the design in any way. I tried to be creative here and find things that weren't just the very typical shawls and socks. Now there are a couple of shawls in here and there are a few pairs of socks and accessories because I really think that those are some of the easiest places to bust your leftover or scrap stash. However, I did try to pull away from that to find some more unconventional places where you can bust your scrap stash and have it be kind of a funky design element for that particular piece. All of these patterns and everything that I mentioned here will be linked down below in the description box so you can head down there, find them down there. Okay, I'm pulling out my scale for this video because I do have a couple of physical examples of my own for some of these patterns and I wanna be able to tell you the weight of yarn that I use to complete the project just to give you a little bit of additional background and information. Okay, for the first pattern I wanna share, this is a shameless plug because I talk about these a lot. I've mentioned them a lot in the past. Pattern number 10 is going to be my own design, the fire pit mitts. Now I know, I know I've been talking about these a lot and I have good reason for that because this pattern is a really great blank slate to play around with color work, to play around with different yarn textures. You could do striping, you could do marling, what have you. These are basic stockinette stitch mitts. They're super plain, but very wearable. And if you add some marling or some striping, or you have fun with some color work motifs, you can really punch them up and make them something unique. And it's a really great place to bust your mini skein stash. So the pair that I'm sharing with you here are the pair that you've seen recently. These are my most finished, um, my most recently finished pair. These are the short version of the fire pit mitts. They're just a really basic fingerless mitten with rolled edges. There's no ribbing on these to be found which is what I love about them. They fit beautifully. Great for wearing if you're needing the, you know, movement of your fingers, because it doesn't cover up most of your fingers. It, it's enough to keep your hands warm, but you still have those fingers there available to you. But just look at the color. Look at how this particular combination of yarns creates a really fun color. Now this is a solid base yarn with a mohair over the top of it. That's not necessarily what we would go to if we're trying to bust our mini skein stash. But the point of this is to show you that you can have a lot of fun with color in here and you can really find some cool yarns in your stash put them together, marl them to come up with a really cool marled color and use those to knit a pair of fire pit mitts. Two skeins of, or two strands of fingering weight yarn would get you the worsted weight gauge that you need for a pair of fire pit mitts. And if you were knitting these, you would only need, let's, let me make sure it's there, 42 grams of yarn. So you could pull out 
a bunch of different mini skeins, marl them together. You could even create a marled mini skein fade and have a lot of fun with color with a pair of fire pit mitts. And that's going to be the name of the game for a few different patterns that I share with you here today. You just have to have a little confidence and know that the purpose of this project is to use up those fun yarns and to get funky with color because that's most likely going to happen if you're using up scraps of what is most commonly sock yarn. So keep that in mind. So that is my first pattern here. It is the fire pit mitts. It is available on Ravelry. It is going to be available on the Wool Needles Hands website very soon and uh, it is linked down below. So definitely check those out because it is a great place to start thinking about busting your mini skein stash. Okay, while we're thinking about mittens, the next pattern I'm gonna be featuring here, pattern nine in my list, is the Back to Basics mittens. These are a pair of cute little standard style mittens and I'm gonna show them to you here and then I'll pop a picture up on the screen, which is very basic mittens and you can see how they're using color here to kind of shake it up a little bit. Now, this is not a pattern specifically written for scraps. However, because this employs in the sample really cool thick and thin stripes, you can see how you can have a lot of fun with color here and this is a light fingering weight pattern so this is gonna be good for using just single skeins of your leftover sock yarn because that that's gonna make the gauge for these mittens. What I love about this is that just like the fire pit mitts, it's a basic stockinette mitten. There's no reason to use a single color. You can do stripes, you can do marling, you can have a lot of fun with color here. You can come up with your own color work motif, you can chart something out and use your scraps to create that motif on this design because it is a basic stockinette pattern. So this is a really good place if you've got those leftover skeins of sock yarn to throw some together or just find a few Few scraps that you want to use for striping, whip up a few pair of these for gifts or even for yourself, and that's a really great use of those leftover scraps that would probably otherwise just languish in your stash. Before I go any further, I also want to mention that down in the description box, I will link you to my Scrappy Projects Favorites bundle on Ravelry so that you can click on that and look through all of the different Scrappy Project patterns that I saved for the purpose of this video. There's more than 10. I picked 10 from this bundle, but you can see some others that I have listed in there as well, just if you find something else outside of what I mentioned here that might be just what you're looking for. Okay, number eight on my list is a shawl design that allows you to knit an entire your shawl with your scraps without having to weave in any ends and I think that's a huge bonus when you're knitting something with lots of various different yarns weaving in all of those ends can be a complete pain this is a design that allows you to do that without having to weave in any ends because those ends are a part of the design and this is called the shortest day shawl it's a design by Christina Gordon, and it is beautiful. I'll pop a picture of it up here, but again, I'm just gonna show you right here. Really pretty diagonal stripes, a real classic fringy shawl, super wearable, kind of funky. It can help punch up any outfit that you're wearing, especially if you're wearing really neutral colors, the whole t-shirt and jeans look. This is such a cool shawl for kind of adding a little visual interest to an outfit like that. And all those little fringy ends that you see there, those are the ends of the different skeins of mini skeins of yarn that you're using to knit the design. And you don't have to weave them in because they're there as a design element. And I think that's a huge bonus. It also looks like it comes in two sizes. There is a smaller size and a large size. So the smaller size uses 20 minis, 20, 20 gram minis. And then the large size would be a full advent if you're using this to bust an advent calendar, 24, 20 gram minis. The whole thing, let's say you don't have any uh, minis that you need to bust, but you really like the look of that. The whole thing would be um, a roughly 400 grams of yarn. So really great option, especially if you wanna bust all of that leftover sock yarn. Okay, I was really tuned in to finding patterns that allowed you not to have to weave in any ends. And this next one I love for that reason and also because it's not a shawl, it's not socks, it's actually a blanket or a throw. And I think that if you're knitting with advent minis or even scraps, that's kind of a really functional way to use those scraps on something that you know you're going to use and love that can become an heirloom piece. So it's like taking all of those, you know, afterthought scraps that you really would just leave to languish and turning it into something very special and meaningful for your family. And that is called Excavation. And it is a throw or blanket pattern by Jana Pejota. And it uses all fingering weight scraps. All of those little fringy parts, that is 
the ends that you don't have to weave in. And the blanket is knit using a garter stitch construction. It's knit diagonally, so you have diagonal stripes. I imagine that it's constructed a lot like one of those grandma's favorite washcloths. An added bonus is that the simple garter stitch construction, perfect for TV binge watching, and there are no ends to work in when you're finished, thanks to the magic of fringe. So that is called Excavation. Again, a free download on Ravelry, linked down below in the description box. Okay, I think this next one's a lot of fun, and it's for the crocheters among us. And there are a lot of knitters who are also doing a little crochet on the side, especially when we're talking about granny squares. So this is your classic granny square blanket. It is called the Granny Advent Blanket. And it's intended for an advent calendar of mini skeins. However, if you have a lot of sock yarn laying around in the form of leftovers and scraps, I'm sure you can accumulate enough of that to create your own granny advent blanket. And it really does a good job of showcasing each of those mini because it almost frames each one, allowing each one to shine, even if it has no cohesive connection to the one next to it, each of them kind of shines on their own. And I think that that's really cool, especially if you're looking for something specific for an advent calendar. Okay, this next design is a pair of socks and I love these because I really love this kind of forking stripe motif that I'm noticing in not only this design, but a couple others as well. One I will show you that I have in person. I think it's a really interesting way to stripe colors and give a little bit of a color work vibe to what is ultimately just a striped design. So these are the Sprocket Socks by Megan Nodecker of Pip and Pin, and they are adorable. Um, I don't have a ton of sock weight minis. I have, I have, you know, I have enough, I guess. Um, but these, I am tempted to cast onto a pair of these just to use up what I do have of sock weight mini skeins because I think they're so adorable, especially if you're striping with hand dyed yarn that's variegated or speckled. Kind of a cool way to give it a stripe look, but also a little bit of a blending happening there. And if you have a whole lot of advent minis, you could knit a few pairs of these for yourself or as gifts. And that's also another really cool functional knit that makes you feel good about using those advent minis for something that you're actually going to use and not just something that gets folded up and put in a drawer and probably not worn very often. So I love the idea of busting your stash, whether it's your mini skein stash or your big skein stash on functional pieces. Okay, the next design is a cowl by Casey Herlihy and it's called Leftover City. And she designed this specifically for using up leftover skeins of yarn. About a year and a half ago, I created a mini skein collection for this pattern um, specifically. However, I think this pattern best serves you as a place to use up advent minis or minis that you just happen to have accumulated as leftovers from projects of the past. That's the best reason to create this particular design. I think that's the best reason to create any of these designs particularly. I think we need less in terms of mini skeins and we need a place to use them more often than anything else and this is definitely one of those places. So this is called Leftover City. It is a cowl. This is all knit in fiber for the people yarn. Several different colorways were used here. This has one, two, three, four, five, six variegated colors, and it has a top and a bottom of one solid color and it's gorgeous. So you can see in the design here, she's using that kind of toothy vertical stripe and horizontal stripe motif. I don't know if there's a name for that, but it's really special. I'm really loving that. Now what's also really cool about this is if you have more minis and you wanna make more of this particular design, there's room for this to grow. So as it is right now, it sits on the neck pretty narrow. And I feel like if you wanted to, you could add a little bit more width to this, using up more of your mini skeins and you could add several more colors to give it a little more height so it bunches up on your neck a little bit more, giving it some more volume. So this is a really great place to play with size and to use up more of your minis. And also just by adjusting your needle size to meet your yarn weight, if you tend to have a lot of worsted weight mini skeins or scraps laying around, you could just up your needle size to a seven or eight, pull out your worsted weight minis and go to town making the same design just with a different yarn weight and a needle size and you're good as gold. So I think this is a fantastic place to use up leftover minis in that really cool kind of toothy stripe pattern. So that is called Leftover City 
by Casey Herlihy, and it is a cowl. And I really think it's just a great jumping off point to come up with your own color stripe pattern, to come up with your own size, use your own yarn weight, and just really play around. So another really great option. And at the time that I'm filming this, it looks like Casey is offering a buy two, get one free on all of her patterns right now. So you can keep that in mind if you are interested in the leftover city cowl. Okay, this next design is a free pattern by Pearl Soho, and it is called the Classic Cuffed Hat. This is a basic uh, beanie or toque style hat with a folded brim, stockinette st uh, stitch body, and a pom-pom on top. And this is another one of those designs that is pretty much a blank slate for playing with color. Because this is a worsted weight hat, you could have a lot of fun here marling two fingering weight yarns together to get a really cool color pattern, and because this is a stockinette beanie, you could almost just start fading colors in and out, doing some stripes. There's no you know, design or stitch pattern that you have to be able to show. It's just a basic beanie with a stockinette stitch pattern, a great place to start playing with color. It requires here 328 yards of worsted weight yarn, which would come to roughly 150 grams of yarn. So if you're trying to pull out your fingering weights to hold together, you really need about 150 grams of yarn to complete that hat at the largest size. And then you can have a ton of fun throwing yarns together for a pom-pom. So that is the classic cuffed hat by Pearl Soho. It is a free pattern download either on Ravelry or Pearl Soho's website. A really great place for marling those fingering weight advent yarns and going to town with color in general. Okay, coming in at number two, this is the Anisadora Shawl by Lindsay Fowler. This is another really great um, opportunity to knit something beautiful and not have to weave in ends at the end because you are gonna be using lots of different colors, especially if you wanna go for the look that she has in her sample, which is absolutely gorgeous. I am not a shawl knitter. Um, it's not my go-to. However, when I see shawls like this, especially ones with fringe, ones with fringe get me every time, but when I see shawls like this with that really beautiful, um, it, it looks like it's employing a mosaic color work um, technique here. When I see things like that, it's very bohemian, very eclectic. It just goes straight to my heart. I love it so much. I could see myself wearing something like that. And because all of those colors don't result in me having to weave in a billion ends, that's enticing to me. So I think this is a really fabulous place. And I know that this was designed with advents in mind because it says, um, I'm so excited to bring you a new countdown advent scrappy pattern for this holiday season. Um, and so she was, she was designing this specifically um, with advents in mind and it's obvious in the design, but you could have fun with using just a few different colors. If you wanted to just do a few different colors repeated in that stripe sequence, you could have a lot of fun with this. So this is an excellent place if you're looking to use up your advent minis specifically, or if you have several kind of extra skeins of yarn lying around, whether they're mini skeins or even semi full skeins of yarn. For example, I have in this basket back here, this is my leftover basket. It's kind of where I throw skeins of yarn that aren't full, don't have a label, kind of just those odds and ends. They're kind of hard to find a project for unless it's socks that you can just adjust the length of. But little things like this, I could throw colors together from this basket and have a lot of fun using these if I wanted to create the Anisadora shawl. And I know that I probably would have some of these left over even at the end, but then of course, that's what this whole video is for, is giving you you know options for those things. So I definitely recommend having a basket where you can chuck those odds and ends and mini skeins in, because I feel like it's patterns like the Anisadora shawl that's a really great place to kind of play around, reach into those baskets, start throwing some color palettes together and use those to knit something really fun, really punchy. And I think in the case of this, really wearable and functional. Okay, the finale for my list is actually something really small and kind of um, super functional. And that is a hot water bottle cover. I mean, what better place to bust your stash of fingering weight yarn than something like a hot water bottle cover where color doesn't matter. You can have a lot of fun. It's not something you have to wear on your person. It's not something you're using to decorate your house. It's just a 
fun place to mess around with color and use up some of those leftover skeins of yarn. I have two in particular that I like. The first one is the water bottle cover by Deborah Norville. This is a worsted weight water bottle cover. So you could double up your fingering weight yarn and you can use twice as much in one project, having a lot of fun with uh, color splashing and pulling. You can even practice some color work motifs. It's all stockinette stitch, so it's super easy. And this particular pattern is available off Ravelry. I think you have to go to a website to find it and I believe it's available for free. And then the other one that I like here is the hot water bottle cover. And this is a design by Emily Boldwan. And it is also a basic stockinette stitch hot water bottle cover and it's a DK weight. So you could probably even throw two skeins of your lighter fingering weight yarn together to make this DK weight. You probably want to check gauge for this because it does need to fit a water bottle. Um, but I don't think it would be difficult to kind of mess around with your gauge and needle size for something like this and I specifically love the picture that she shows here because you can tell she's using some of that really pretty speckled hand dyed yarn to make hers but you can have a lot of fun with color here. You can make a hot water bottle for yourself. You can make a hot water bottle for family and friends. This is just a really fun way to use up some of that leftover sock yarn with again some of my favorite knits functional knits, things that you know you're going to use and using up those little leftover minis are gonna provide it with a fun pop of color that'll make you smile every time you reach for it. All right, guys, that is it for me. That is all I have for ways you can use up some of those leftover odds and ends and mini skeins. I think the biggest takeaway from this is just to remember, find patterns that are simple, basic, stockinette and garter stitch. You can even pull out a simple, basic stockinette stitch sweater and go to town using your mini skeins to create a really fun stripe motif, marl your yarn together by holding two strands together and just get creative with color. This is where you can have a lot of fun with color using and knitting projects that don't require the color to be quite so um, wearable, maybe things like blankets and shawls that can work as accent pieces to your outfit, accent pieces to your home. Stick with projects like that. There are a lot more on my Ravelry favorites bundle for scrappy projects. Like I said, I'll link to that down below. You can check that out and if you have any suggestions for using up advent yarn or scraps, please leave it down below in the comments section. I so appreciate you taking the time to watch this video today. I hope you took some value from this. And if you did, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe and click that bell icon so you can be notified anytime I upload something new. Thank you so much. It means so much to me to have you here. Until I see you again, happy knitting, happy making, happy whatever it is that you're doing. Take care, be well, and I will see you soon. Bye.